Hello everybody on the internet. Now, today was unexpectedly crazy to say the least with Disney's big investor meeting. The Star Wars news and the Marvel news and Disney's own news was crazy. It's overwhelming the amount of content they're making. Now, this video is about the MCU content. But first I'll give my quick thoughts on Star Wars content. The only Star Wars announcements I care about are the movies, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Ahsoka, and The Bad Batch. Everything else, mm, meh, doesn't look that important. But I was eagerly waiting for the MCU Disney Plus show trailers. I didn't cover the first WandaVision trailer when it came out because wasn't really much to cover. But now, oh boy, there is. So, WandaVision, of course, still looks <laughs> mind-bogglingly weird. It's... It's made pretty well, visually, how it switches between the different eras of sitcoms. And this trailer was better than the first one. We get even more of a sense that reality is not what it seems. Reality is broken. And Wanda and Vision in that reality seem to realise something's wrong. Really, the main reason I'm excited for this is because it ties into Multiverse of Madness. Now, the best thing that they dropped and the thing that I am most hyped for is the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. The Falcon and the Winter Soldier is the best idea for a show they could have possibly thought of. And not just because Falcon and Bucky together is an awesome pair with awesome banter and not because of the awesome action, just because of the story they can create out of this. And the trailer was awesome. They clearly are holding back on a lot, but the action and the visuals, it looks like a movie. These are shows, but they look like movies. And we get a glimpse of Zemo returning that's gonna be awesome and the whole US agent plotline that's also gonna be interesting since the government clearly wants him to be the new Captain America not Sam Anthony Mackie and Sebastian Stan look great together in this this show is gonna do so much for their characters the whole end part of the trailer with Falcon avoiding the missiles being shot at him through the canyon that looks epic it was a great trailer. My only complaint was that it's too short. And here's a rather strange one, Loki. So, the alternate timeline Loki from Endgame took the Tesseract, clearly teleported away somewhere, and now he's been caught by the Time Variance Authority. And they must make him work with them to help fix some timeline stuff. Yeah, I really have no words for Loki. I don't know how to describe it. I don't even know what I'm seeing really. So much weird timeline stuff. Other messed up realities. A lot of weird looking people. But it is cool to see Owen Wilson in the MCU. More than anything, I want to know what the importance of this show is. Because this is an alternate timeline Loki. And Loki is dead. So what has this got to do with the rest of the MCU? And another interesting one. What if... So I like that they're doing What If as an animated show. Just gonna take random aspects of the MCU and say, what if this happened? What if this happened? Just like the comics did. So what if Black Panther was Star-Lord? <laughs> that, that's funny, yeah. And what if Agent Carter took the Super Soldier Serum? And there are Marvel zombies in there. And there's Doctor Strange fighting an evil version of himself. I think they're really doing What If for fun. I don't know if it's going to have any larger importance to the MCU though. I mean, the Watcher is in it though, he's the one narrating it all. So maybe that might be larger relevance, we'll have to wait and see. And a lot of the MCU actors will be voicing their parts, and this is going to be the last time we ever hear Chadwick. Rest in peace Chadwick. Now I'm going to go over the other quick announcements. So many Disney Plus shows announced, it's crazy. So Captain Marvel 2 comes out in November 2022 and will feature Miss Marvel. I expected that to happen. And Abomination is going to return in She-Hulk. I hoped that would happen and I'm glad it is. That's going to be a way to do more for the Hulk's character as well as introduce She-Hulk since they can't do a Hulk movie. And one I didn't exactly expect, Secret Invasion. But it sounds cool though, Nick Fury and Talos. So we've, we've only seen good scrolls in the MCU so far, but now we're clearly going to see bad scrolls. And this might also feature Sword dealing with the oncoming scroll invasion. 
I expected that, that they would do the secret invasion in a movie, but they're going a different direction. That's okay. And this one, I'm actually not crazy about. Ironheart. I've never liked the character Ironheart. In Armor Wars, this sounds a lot better. A show all about War Machine and dealing with Tony Stark's worst fear come to life, his technology being used for evil. I like that they used the title Armor Wars, straight, straight from the comics. And this is going to be a great way to take a step back into Iron Man territory. Maybe we could see Crimson Dynamo. And this is something no one expected. The Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special. <laughs> that sounds weird, but also awesome. James Gunn is a fan of the Star Wars Holiday Special, and he's been asking Kevin Feige about this for years. <laughs> I can't wait to see how this turns out. And I am Groot. Just be a couple of baby Groot shorts. That doesn't sound like it'll be very important. And Christian Bale is the villain of Thor Love and Thunder. And now we know who he's playing. Gore the God Butcher. Ooh. That'll be pretty freaky. I can't wait to see him do that role. I didn't expect Gore the God Butcher though. Since they gave Hela Gore's powers in Ragnarok. So they must be going to do something different. And Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania. That was unexpected, but even more so, it features Kang the Conqueror. <sighs> I'm so happy Kang the Conqueror is coming to the MCU. He was the number one villain I wanted to be in the MCU, but I did not expect him to be introduced in Ant-Man 3. So this is probably going to be his first of more than one appearance. I have a theory that Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania is going to do some Young Avengers setup. I've speculated that ever since Ant-Man and the Wasp. And now, probably the most mind-blowing thing is Marvel Studios confirmed they're doing a Fantastic Four movie and it's going to be directed by John Watts. I didn't expect John Watts to direct a Fantastic Four movie. I didn't expect them to get a director that I've already worked with to do this. But it sounds great, because I love what John Watts has done with the Spider-Man movies. I can't wait to see what he does with Spider-Man 3 that's filming now. I'm taking all the rumors with Spider-Man 3 with a big grain of salt. Nothing big like everyone's saying is exactly confirmed. But man, I cannot wait for Marvel Studios Fantastic Four. And this Four logo, it looks cool. It's enough to get me excited. The one thing left to do that'll make everyone happy, you need to cast... John Krasinski and Emily Blunt as Mr. Fantastic and the Invisible Woman. Please, Marvel Studios, do it. If you're a Star Wars and an MCU fan and you don't have Disney+, Plus, you are required to get it. <laughs> I can't wait to hear more about everything the MCU is doing. I can't wait to get a look at Hawkeye and Moon Knight. I'm really hyped for those two shows as well. But mainly, I can't wait for Phase 4 to actually start. And it will start with WandaVision and, and then Falcon and Winter Soldier. And then Black Widow comes out in May, after so many delays. And I just want to quickly mention, if you want to see my further thoughts on things, then follow me on the Stardust app. The Stardust app is a good extension of my channel. On there, I cover things that I don't cover on YouTube. So I'd really appreciate it if you could follow me on there. So, what do you think of this crazy Disney day? Are you excited for all the Star Wars shows? Are you excited for all the Marvel shows and the movie announcements? Let me know in the comments below and may the force be with you.